school soul food family chef jeff is back with another video all right y'all i've been uh kind of promoting this video all week long and this is going to be a different type of a video than i normally do and what's going to be so frustrating and it is kind of frustrating but it is what it is the way people are um uh, people don't watch videos when i'm sitting down and talking and just you know what they say, quote unquote, shooting the breeze. But when I do sit down, take time to sit down, especially today, what I'm gonna tell you can be helpful, more helpful than how I fry chicken or how I make a pound cake or how I make gravy or uh, how I can jelly. This will take you further, even get you to steps, not only there, but in life. Now let me start out and say, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a life counselor, nothing like that. But I am going to tell you ways that was instilled with me, with my mentors, and my parents, of course, was my number one mentors, of course. And what helped with me that started at childhood, even up to my adult life, even up to today, what made me where I can kind of right now live comfortably, comfortably without any stress or or issues in life. I mean, it, we all have stress and issues in life, but overcome more than some people have. It's a decision, a lot of stuff in your life is a decision that you make growing up, and a lot of decisions that you make as a young person affects you for years and years and years and years. So, yeah. So anyway, y'all, let's get started. This is also my celebration of Black History Month. I of course, I love the culture. I love the history. I do a lot of reading. As y'all gonna know, as I go through this video, I'm gonna share a lot of things that I read and how important it is to read um, open books and actually read, turn the TV off and actually read, but read of the culture of the African-American black people or however you wanna say it. I say black, I don't say African-American. Um, throughout the history, I talked to my mom. She taught my grandmother and how it was back then compared to now. and the strive and the sacrifices they made for me to sit here and do what I do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis is because a lot of them, and not only blacks, it's blacks, white, Hispanic, everybody coming together as one. That's what my, I love about my channel, that it's all one unit. It's not all blacks, not all whites, not all Hispanic. It's a whole culture of people, and I really love that because, like I tell people, that come to my channel. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what sexual preference you are, what religion, what political uh, aisle you lean, right, left, up, down, whatever. I don't care. I just want you to come and listen. And I love everyone like that. And that's what my core, my business, my people that work for me, my culture of friends is like that. I don't have all blacks working for me. I don't have all whites working for me. I don't have all black friends. I don't. It's just all, I don't see color. I don't. Okay, let's get started, y'all. About me. I'm going to touch on, let me tell you what I'm going to be touching on here. First, I'm going to tell you about me and a little things about me and how, what, what's my DNA, how I work. You know, what's, you know, pretty much how, what, enough about me and the history and how I am as an individual. Then I'm going to start on the history of old school soul food, how it started, how it was just frivolously taken away from me. A lot of it had to do with my stupidity. It was the whole, my whole brand was just taken away from me and lost forever, and I had to restart it. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell you YouTube, how I started it, how you can be pretty much successful with it. I'm still learning the ups and downs and getting advice from people, but how to get it rolling. Of course, y'all know I just went over 100K on YouTube, which is very difficult achieve, to achieve. I'm gonna tell you how I done it and uh, the ins and out on that, what equipment I use, what editing I use. I'm gonna try to go pretty quick on that. And then I'm gonna get to uh, my company, which I call a ministry, but actually it's in the state of Texas registered at a company. Later on, I wanted to be a nonprofit, but first I had to register at a company and I'm gonna show you that how I did it, what steps you need to take and make sure your, your eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed because if it's not, the, the IRS and the government will come after you. So you need to really make sure everything, when it start growing, growing like mine has, uh, you really need to do that. Then I'm gonna tell you how I was able to retire at 53, I'm 54 in uh, two weeks from tomorrow. I'll be 53 years, 54 years old. 
and I'm gonna tell you why I didn't retire at 50 and the, how you can make it in your life pretty much. I don't care if you're married with kids. My brother's on the same goal I am. He's married with three kids and a wife. So I'm not going to say this because I'm single married with no kids. Anyone can do what I'm going to tell you can do. So don't use that crutch. I'm single. I, I got a friend. She's a single mother with two kids right now on, and she's going to retire, I think, at 52. And she can do it, too. So, as I mean, everybody has a different uh, half phase and things. But I think excuses limit your power. You, you put excuses in your mind, it limits you. You're already limiting yourself. When you put excuses why you can't do nothing, you always have to say why you can. I'm gonna tell you trials and tribulations, everything hasn't been easy for me, and I'm gonna discuss that to you. It's all, a lot of it is in your mindset. 75% of it is mental when you're gonna be a successor in life. And I'm gonna show you that and tell you how to save and how to be pretty much financially independent at the age of 50. Now, some people are gonna retire at 65, that's your choice. I didn't, I didn't plan to retire at 65, because in my mind, I'm very, very, people say, you crazy, Jeffrey. He say, I'm going to live till I'm 100. So I figured I'm going to work 50 years of my life and then retire 50 years of my life. That's 100 years, I say. So look, that's where I plan to do it. And God, grace, and mercy, he's going to let me be 100. I'm going to be 100 years old, the oldest YouTuber in the world doing videos on YouTube. So let's get started, y'all. About me. What you see on camera is pretty much me. Now, I'm going to say this in the camera, and it is very, very true. I am a laid back individual. I don't let things get to me. I never have since I was a kid growing up. I just don't let things, I don't let drama in my life. I don't let stress and friction get to me. Um, I've had friends, the same friends I've had for over 30 years, of course my brother and friend. I can count on three fingers I've ever got upset in life. Many people can't believe that. You can ask my, if you see my mama, my brother, ask him, my friends, coworkers, you never see me upset. You never see me blow up the handle. You never see me getting mad, cussing nobody out. No one has ever seen that from me. That is not me. I take, from a young age, I took life is too short to be getting, letting people upset me, letting situations upset me, letting somebody cut me off on the freeway upset me. No, uh-uh. I'm not gonna do that. Life is too short. And I thought of this, it's gonna be kind of weird what I'm about to tell you, but this is why I start thinking like this at a young age. When I was young, we used to go, people pass away, we go to funerals and stuff like that. And as a kid, you don't understand what is going on and what's happening in your mind. And you look in and say, well, that ain't such and such, uncle such and such, or cousin such and such has passed away, they're in that box, they can't go to the store tomorrow. They can't wake up tomorrow and, and, and do this and do that. It's like, what if they was, uh, planning to go here and go there, they're not able to do that no more. And that used to kind of resonate on my mind. And from that mind, I say, why am I taking the time, wasting my day, getting upset, getting mad, getting pissed off at somebody, or getting upset for something that not even important to me? So I made it that my choice that day, pretty much growing up. No, you're not going to make me upset. I enjoy life. What you see on the camera, where you see me laughing and joking and on the camera with my coworker laughing, joking. And when I used to work, that was my job. I love to make people laugh. I love to make sure people are having a good time and enjoying their day. And try, I just love it. Life is too short to go around upset, bitter, and stuff. And I'm like that. But another thing I'm going to tell you, it's going to kind of be uh, uh, kind of, what do you say, contradicting what I just said. But the most of the time, I like to be, alone in the party you know what i'm saying if there's something going on i'm not that rah rah look at me ha ha if in a group of people i like to be in the back of the room just watching people enjoy themselves i'm interacting but i'm not that person in front oh look at me ah, da, da, da. when i go to church i like to sit in the back of the church i'm having this just as awesome time as anybody in the front but i'm not that person just like to be seen and out vultures and slow oh, look at you can you know those individuals have got to be all about them look at me it's me, I'm here, y'all hear what I'm saying, da da da. That's not me. I'm low key. When the camera comes off, turns off, and when my team is here, we're doing a lot of videos, I go upstairs in my room. I love comedy shows from like the seven. I love Fred Sanford, Beverly Hillbillies, The Jeffersons, Good Times. Uh, I even love The Golden Girls. I love shows like that's uplifting. I, love, I watch news, I don't watch a lot of news. I'm not in a shelter where I don't know what's going on in the world, I do. But a lot of news is programmed to be negativity. People like a train wreck. That's why they put 
uh, uh, violence and murders and all that stuff on the news because they put the goodness and stuff going on in the world, nobody would watch it. That's the way it's programmed. So now, most of the time when I'm not on camera, not doing videos and stuff like that, when the camera cuts off, I'm mostly just to myself, just relaxing and, and, and reading. I read a lot of books. I'm going to get to that later. And that's just me. I am just love to enjoy life. I love to, like you already know, I love to fish. I love to travel. I love to just get on the road and just drive for hours and hours, listen to my blues or my gospel music. I even like country music, depending on the mood. And just enjoy life and think and refresh my brain. So that's what kind of person I am. If you meet me out in the public or you see me, please come up to me. I really, really enjoy Like I said, I really enjoy reading letters from people. I'm very humble because I don't look at myself as, oh, you Chef Jeff, Jeff, you. My brother says this and he kind of embarrassed me, but I know why he do it. He, my brother's very proud of me. He really looks up to me even as a young child. And my mother too and everybody. And I was in church at his church. I go visit his church, especially when he's actually the guest. He's getting the priest that son here let me know and I support my brother anyway for ever since he was a little kid and he called me out he said that's I want to thank my brother Jeffrey for of course Wayne that's what they called me uh for being here he, he can call my channel out. he said yeah he's YouTube famous so he don't want to admit it but he and I don't look at myself as famous I don't look I look at myself and just that's why I say when I'm around my like my mother brother my niece and nephew I don't want to be Chef Jeffrey. I just want to be Uncle Wayne. I just want to be Wayne, somebody. Even at work, I didn't, a lot of people know about the YouTube channel, but a lot of people didn't. And I like that, just being me, not being somebody, oh, you this and this and that. You just want to be you sometimes. That's why I say when I cut the camera off and I go upstairs and, and relax, I'm just me. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a Chef Jeffrey. I'm not this, that. I'm just just lay back me a lot of times of course i'll promote my channel to my team and they oh you need to okay i will promote my channel but with that being said i just want to be me sometime yeah but like i said if you see me out if you walk up and i've had people see me at the store i've seen people see me out and of course i'll take pictures with them i'll sign things you want me to sign i love that because i want to make people happy so just letting you know a little about me on that. Just a laid back individual, never let things get to me. Like I say, I've been, I think on three times I've been upset in my life. And how many people can say that? I just don't let things get to me. I've had uh, things happen to my, people say, oh, you got a, uh, when the water pipe busted in my, you know, last year when the free water flowing all in my living room and, I just say, well, I get this from my mom, too. My mom is the let go, let God, pray about it, God going to take. She is that. She is my mentor and inspiration for that. My mom, I've never seen her upset. Now, she will get upset, but I never see her get upset or not. My mom had the same mental, and mama, everybody loved my mom. That, I can tell you, you know how people say he don't have an enemy in the world? My mom is, I don't think nobody on this earth hate my mom, have nothing bad to say about my mom. She is one of the core of the earth. And I mean, she just, I never seen my, now I'm a quick kid, when we did something, she would tell you behind up, but she did it out of love, not just friction and upset. But my mom was just one of the assaults of the earth, and I get that from her, my demeanor, laid back, calm, even the pressure's on, even at work, when you get, when I used to work, you got three, four, five hundred people, we got a plate up, we got things going on, we need to pick this up, we need to pick this up. I'm the calm in the storm. Like I say, people look to their leader. If their leader is all upset, all this stuff, if the leader's calm in the kitchen, you can ask anyone. I was calm, calm to meet her, never got upset, never under pressure. Get, you have to be like that in life. That's very important. You can achieve a lot if you calm and can deal with things under pressure and let the things get to you. Okay, let me move on. I don't want this video to be too long here. Okay, Facebook. Facebook, really the old school soul food brand. This brand right here, and this brand right here, old school soul food. I got it upside down. Food we grew up on, still remember the day. This started in 2012. Facebook, you, it started with Facebook. I'm gonna say Facebook, because that's how it started. Let me say, I didn't have no social media account. I had a Facebook page with 400 people in it. I wasn't big on social media. I had one social media account that was Facebook. I very seldom posted anything on it. Like I say, and I've told y'all in the previous video, I'm considered boring because I don't go out and party. I don't drink. I don't go to clubs. I don't do nothing crazy. All I do is go to home, go to work. I do some fishing, go to church, and pretty much hang out with friends and just watch sports on TV sometimes. That's boring to people. 
A lot of people don't resonate that. I ain't got nothing going on in my life, just that. Just doing what I do. So Facebook was nothing, and I liked it because I could connect with a lot of my classmates in high school and stuff like that. They had Facebook. So I kind of got on it for that reason. Other than that, I had nothing to say. My life is completely boring in the eyes of a lot of people. And I told you that's why I never got married and have ladies quality because to me, I'm boring. I'm just, like I said, I'm not a party animal. Never have been. Going drugs, going out to clubs and staying out two or three in the morning and then I go to work, work hard. Sometimes I had to work extra hours. I love God. I'm telling you another thing about Facebook. Put God first and everything. I don't hide my uh, my apparition of God, Lord Jesus Christ in my life. I put him first and I pray very a lot of times on a daily basis. I might pray 10, 12 times a day. I'll walk through the house and just say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for giving me through and making me achieve everything I can achieve. I get in my car and I say, thank you, Jesus, for letting me have multiple vehicles and not having to choose. I'm a, I pray every day different things. I don't get on my knees, oh, Lord. No, sometimes I pray in my mind. I don't even have to pray outside. Yes, but anyway, it started, Facebook started in 2012. I had a co-worker, and I'm going to call her name out. If you're watching this, Charlotte, I appreciate her name. is Charlotte Chesney. She used to work with me in the club. She left the club, and I took over her position as purchase manager at my job. This happened in October 2012. I used to do Thanksgiving to go orders at my job, and every year, Charlotte, she would want me to get, she would always take some Gibbler Grave and Cranberry Sauce, I think dressing home. I always did those. We had five, 600 to go orders. I did every one of them. I made all the dressing, Cranberry Sauce, and Gibbler Grave and all that, and, uh, and it was for the go orders, and I did every one of them. I had a couple people helping me, but I actually made every one of them, and they would pan it up. I mean, of course, I made big batches of it. And she said, why don't you post your recipes and share them for November, Thanksgiving, and so we can, you know, people can kind of you know, know. That's how it started. So this is in October. She told me in October, go November the next month. So that's what I did. I created a little page there, and I don't know what I eventually called it, Jeffrey's This, and I said, I need to... What can I call this? Down home cooking, whatever. I didn't want nothing with my name affiliated on it. That, that piggybacks to what I said at the beginning. It's not about me. Old school soul food is not about me. You have no name on here with Chef Jeffrey. It's not about Chef Jeffrey. It is old school soul food. It is about soul food. It's not. I'm just. I'm not that kind of person to put myself out there. You don't see my picture on here. When I had the band, this created three years ago. I had to, almost three years ago. I had this brand created, and I sat down with the the person. He said, "You want to put your picture?" I said, "No, I don't want my picture on it. I want something food based." He put the little black and skillet on it. It took us about a week to get a design like I wanted it. And then he put my phrase, food we grew up on and still remember the day. There's a little type on here, but I had to change it. I put on up there, but it's too late now. It just had to be like that. Later on, it's going to be a classic. But I started November, uh, October 2012. I had 400 friends on Facebook. I think I about 600 now. Another thing about my Facebook friends, I don't put anybody on my Facebook that I have never met in person, don't know anything about. Unless I grew up with you, I work with you, I know you on a personal basis. That's the only way I'll ask somebody on my... A lot of people send me Facebook requests, even from the old school Topo family. I'm sorry, I will deny you unless I know you on a personal level. I met you, I know what kind of people you are. That's the only people I let on my personal Facebook page. I think I have like 600-something people. You see people with three or 4,000. You really know three or 4,000 people? You know how many people? No, I don't let people in my inner circle really like them my, unless I know them on a personal level. I have met them, worked with them. I know what kind of people they are. So anyway, I created the business page, and then I had to figure out, I ain't nothing about this Facebook stuff, I had to figure out how in the world do I do this? Put this, uh, um, tell the people come over. So I was telling, doing it like an invite of a party. I didn't know you could go in there and invite people. Eventually I figured it out, and then I had people come over, and it was like 250 or 60 or 70, maybe 100 people from my personal page to co-like my, because the only people I knew, I didn't know how to get the thing started. So Charlotte went and people would share it, and Charlotte said, oh, Jeffy has a Facebook page, and she was telling people, and that's how it started. So this was 2012. Okay, it kept on 2013, I had about 1,000 people or whatever, 2015, it wasn't, I mean, I didn't think nothing of this, I mean, I was just posting recipes, and one time I just went three or four or five months, 
didn't post nothing and people were saying oh well you need to post and I put something on there and I wouldn't even put the I put the recipe sometimes I just put the picture of a food and put no recipe or nothing like that so yeah so then uh, I'm I need to kind of shorten these up because I know I'm going along on this uh, uh, I won't try to do this video in less than an hour long story short uh, I had about 2,000 2,500 people on my Facebook page Okay, in 2014, um, 2014, 2015, I wrote all this down, but I didn't write that down. 2015, I had about 3,500 people. So 2012 to 2015, I had 2,300, 2,500 people. But July 2015, let me tell you, every one of my social media has a virtual impact where God touches it. I put some July, this is all I did. I did a 30 second, 30 second clip with the recipe of homemade ice cream. Well, me pulling the ice cream up out of the thing and putting it in the pan and then I do it. Facebook, it just blew up. It went from 2,500 to about, let's see, about 12,000 within 30 days. It just blew up. It went viral. Just that one little video went viral. Somebody saw it, somebody shared it, homemade ice cream. Voila, it blew up. It went to 15,000 people. Long story short, 2015 to 2017, I had grew up to 175,000 subscribers on Facebook, Old School Soul Food Facebook. Now, let's go down to October 2017. Make a long story short, this is how God works. You get too greedy, you get the big head. Oh, look at me, ha, 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 knowing that's not me, but the devil talking to you. Oh, you can make money with this. You can do this and this and this. I had somebody hit me up on a messenger. Oh, I pay you $2,000 a, 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 a week to put ads on your page. I already heard people take ads. I ain't know how it worked, and I do now, and I got I'm more smart now with it because I was used like I said, I'm used to the, new to the social media thing. I just never dealt with it. So this guy hit me up. I said, no, 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 let me think about it. Next week, hit me up again. 2,000 people on your a week and you let me put articles and ads and stuff on there. I still get these messages. I delete them right away. But I say, okay, that sounds good. Oh, I'm make two thousand dollars. That's four. That's two, four, six. That's eight thousand dollars a month. Oh, that's a lot of money. Okay. You see, all you need to do is add me as admin on your page. And I go in there and do this and this. I say, yeah, he probably seems like he's pretty sharp. I don't know who this guy is. He just emailed me. I've known him two weeks. This guy went in there instantly. I was on my way to work. I'm telling you, when I did this, instantly. I made him admin. If y'all know how that works, you make admin. He has control just like I do on the page. Admin, he got in there, clicked, took me off the page, took over. He's admin. I'm locked out my own page. Ain't nothing I can do. Old school soul food is in somebody else's hands. He totally obliterated it. He started putting crazy stuff on there, weird stuff, just turned the whole page. I tried to get with Facebook. Don't have now 800 number you can call them. You have to email Facebook, hope they call you back. You got the messenger. I went this through this two or three months. Facebook kind of reached out. They're investigating. They say, oh, maybe you told him. you." And then they say, oh, you sold the page. He said, you sold the page to him back and forth. Long story short, eventually Facebook took them about a year and a half. They totally just deleted the old page. But in the meantime, I kind of pondered on this two or three days. I let everybody know my page was stolen. Don't believe nothing to put on it. Da, da, da. I created another old school soul food page in caps. That's why you see it in caps. Cause I had to do a little bit different than he had his. I had originally, so it, it, the, the name would get improved. I started building my page right away. I say, this is my page. The other one, da, da, da. Eventually, he was still trying to copycat my recipes or whatever. And I'm thinking, you, I'm the old school soul food page. You know, you can do. This was 2017. I lost 175,000 subscribers. I was devastated. I built this thing and somebody came and took it with just like that. That's how God, that's how God punish you when the devil come in and you listen to the devil. So look, I say, I'm not going out like this. I didn't let it get to me. I said, look, I'm gonna just create me another page. Everybody was with me. I went to my friends again and said, look, y'all, I told them what happened. I need y'all to come and like my new page. They, my friends are awesome. They come back, here they come. It almost had me in tears thinking about it now. They come back, I had four, five, six hundred, of course, and, and then other people that knew about my Facebook that was on there previously was looking for me because Facebook had finally just deleted the other one. Yeah, and they come back, oh, I wonder what happened to you in my old numbers. They come back, ba-da-da, da-da-da, start building it back up, building it back up. 
This time I did extra security on it, which I have security on all my uh, 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 social media accounts now. I got a little advice how to do it. It's very secure where that don't happen again. And people try to come in. I still get the message every once in a while. I can pay. I just click them, delete the message. I don't even respond. Yeah. So these people, they'll come up and they scammers. That's what they do. That's what they do for a living. They come in, try to steal people's pages, steal people's content and for their own because they're not able and smart enough to work on their own and do their own stuff. They're just thieves on social media. So long story short, till today, this is how God works. He takes things for you, and God said in the Bible, I'm going to take what to take from you, I'm going to turn it into good, and he's going to flip it. So in 2022, I knew I had 175000 in 2017, and right now I have 367000 God doubled what I had back then in less than the time that I had before. It took me five years ago in 75 and less time to even double that. So I've had a hardcore lesson at that on social media how to do that. So yeah, it just, it really devastated me, but look back on it, it was a learning experience. I learned from that and I definitely will never forget that. And I took precautions and advice on how to secure my account. Cause Facebook, they don't care. They dipped into it, they investigated. I showed the emails and stuff like, they just finally, thank you, they deleted it. So I, I, I had everything I needed. I have all my pictures and stuff like that. I just had to retype all the recipe, that's all. So yeah. That's what happened there. Now, YouTube. YouTube, I started in 2000, May 2019. I had a co-worker. Her name is Alyssa, and we started at the same time, and she didn't work on her like I worked on mine. Alyssa, I'm calling you out because I'm kicking your butt because you ain't grinding like I told you. But anyway, she say, this is how it started. It's, it's funny how people bring, God brings people in your life for a season to give you advice and then just, it's just, I think this guy, the kid, he's the kid. It was uh, one day at lunch, we have an employee cafeteria, I'm walking in there and I'm discussing my Facebook with somebody, I had that like, 300,000 something, and this kid, his name is Phi Nguyen, he was a Vietnamese kid, he was 19, Phi was 19 years old. He just started that, he was like a, a student, like an extern guy working with us, he just started, he'd been there about a month, maybe month and a half. And we was talking about, I was walking through the cafeteria. I was talking about Facebook with somebody, YouTube channel, stuff like that. And he said, Chef Jeffrey, he said, won't you start a YouTube channel? Uh, he said, people, they get a lot of, he's talking about money too, but he said, you get a lot of more views and a lot of more exposure on YouTube. And I'm thinking, I'm not YouTube. I'm not the kind of person to talk and do all this stuff. That ain't me. But it kept in my mind. He just said that for a little bit. That's all he, he just, it, and it kept, I went home and I thought about this YouTube. I watched YouTube before, and when you want something, you go to YouTube, and cause I watch YouTube. I mean, you know, watch exclusively like I do now, but I watched it. I'm thinking YouTube, how you do that? I ain't have a clue how YouTube work. I don't know about the YouTube. I had to good work Facebook. And I said, YouTube, okay, let me check this out or whatever. So it was in, this was uh, May, 2019, I started YouTube. I lost my first video. It was a blackberry cobbler. There's just bubbling in the stove. I didn't say nothing. It was like a minute clip. I said, let me put that on there. It got like 10 views or whatever. 12 views, 150 views. I said, well, it's YouTube. I said, well, we'll see where it goes. But another thing about Fee. Fee worked there about six months and he quit and whatever. I don't even know what happened to him. This, like I said, God brings people into your, your life for a season. He made a big impact on my life today just by that little suggestion, a little word suggestion, and then left from there. It's amazing how people do that. But anyway, May 2019, I started YouTube, a little video here, and uh, I got getting advice from certain people, how to do YouTube, what camera to use, and what devices to use. I'm gonna show you in just a second. Let me get this video, uh, let me try to speed, I'm trying to shorten this thing. But anyway, I had about initially 100 subscribers. I used my personal page, which I started YouTube in 2012. That's why you look on my YouTube store in 2012. That's when I opened my account. I just changed the name from my name to Old School Soul Food. I didn't open a sector account. So Old School Soul Food, actually 2019, May of 2019. So I started posting videos once, maybe once a month maybe twice a week, I go home and do that. And they were saying, I cook every day. But my issue was, I'm not good on camera. I'm just not good, I'm not good on camera. I just don't feel comfortable 
like I say, I'm not the kind of person to put myself out there just talking. Even though I talk and I'm not talking, but this is different. You have to talk every day and talking to yourself in a house with just you. And it's just like, what is this? This is really idiotic and stupid, really. I'm saying, what am I doing? But I kept doing it. I kept being persistent, and I kept reaching out to other YouTubers. Like I told you, say hi to Matthew. He was very influential to me. I talk about this young man a lot. His channel, say hi to Matthew, Canadian. He trying to told me, he told me, very resonated home. He said, do, do it because you love it. Be post regular and interact with your fans, in which I interact with y'all. Y'all know I interact with y'all. I, I comment every video and stuff like that. And I do. I love cooking. I cook every day when I go home, come home. So why not do it? So 2019, I kept going and uh, I was modernized in November, which is very, very modernized. You got to have a thousand subscribers and 6,000 uh, viewer hours. Uh, that was back then. I don't know what it is now. And I get that in what? six eight months and which is unheard of in YouTube to get money now meaning you get money off ads of the videos that are ads to pop up you get revenue off of that so I was modernized by the end of the year so I say wow and I just kept posting even after modernized it was just like okay this is a grind it's a daily grind because I get home from work sometimes I work 12 hours a day I have to come home and do a video it's okay to come home and cook. That's different, to come home, just put on something and cook it, but to set up things and actually measure things out and really do it in a proper manner is different than just coming home cooking. That's what made it so difficult. People don't realize what it goes in and out. It's difficult. The video of YouTube, it's not what you see me just sitting there cooking. There's a lot of ends before, in, before doing and after to go into the, to put a video up. That's why I get a lot of, I have zero tolerance for people to talk mess or uh, have crazy comments because you know, I, at first thing I ask them, let me see your YouTube channel. You gonna advise me about something? Let me see your YouTube channel and let me see how you do yours and then I'll take advice from you. Most time enough, people don't have no response. People are so quick to criticize and re ridicule people and they don't know what the people go through on a, to make things happen. So yeah, so anyway, 2000 and uh, November 2019, I was modernized. So I had grown up to maybe like by the end about three or four or five thousand subscribers. Moving into 2020, I got up to like 10, 12,000. It was slowly growing little by little. I was posting on a regular basis. It's very important you post regularly and do this because you love it. Don't do it because it's a job. If it's something stressful, you ain't gonna wanna do it. I loved it. Once I got a hang of it and got in a routine how to get things set up, but still, I'm still learning. You look at some of my new uh, old video, it's so dark, the camera's all messed up. I ain't know what kind of cameras to use and what kind of lighting. I'm gonna show you in a second what I use after I finish this uh, uh, detail here. It was just crazy. I don't know why, I ain't no clue what I was doing. So I'm just putting some video out and posting. I ain't knowing about no editing and I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I kept doing it, kept doing it. November, uh, like I say, November 2010, I'm modernized. Up to 2020, I got up to 20 something thousand people. Okay, this was my big break. Like I said, I had a big break with Facebook that blew up. I needed some kind of God touch it to make it go by. You need some time with social media, you need something to push it even to the next level. So I was consistently being consistently working on it, doing posting. So no December 2020, YouTube took notice. YouTube take notice of your videos. Believe it or not, they look at you, they look how consistent you are, they look at what you're saying, they look at the comments, the likes, the feedback. So 2020, December 2020, you know when you go to YouTube, you got a trending tab on there? What's trending of the day? What's trending in in uh, music, what's trending in television, what's trending in news. YouTube, they give me a day ahead notice, but I didn't see it till the day of it. I didn't check my email, I happened to check it the next day. They made me creator of the rise, creator on the rise for one full day. That means not only United States, that's all over the world. They promote a YouTube channel. Create on the ride, meaning the YouTube channel that's really, really rising and really gaining in popularity. Meaning everyone is going to see that when they open that trending tab. When they did that, I had 24,000, maybe 25,000, 24,000, 24,000 subscribers that day. Before that weekend, they did it on a Friday. They do it all day Friday, 24 hours. Saturday morning by Saturday morning, I had over 52,000 subscribers. It doubled my subscribers. See how God worked? It just, with consistency, 
it doubled my subscribers. I had all the, I had cut my notifications off. I never seen, what are these people coming from? What is this, this is this? And people were saying, oh, you create on the ride. You, I, what is create on the ride? I didn't have a clue what was going on. I hadn't checked my email before, my Gmail. I have two or three emails, the Gmail's connected to my uh, uh, YouTube channel. I checked it and they had sent me a day before that I was gonna be creating a rise. It just blew up my channel. I have a, uh, maybe I put a picture of the screenshot that I, I never seen nothing like it. Everybody all over the world was following my channel and, and my, people probably watching right now, that's how they come to my channel because they saw the creator of the rise. Old school soul food creator of the rise for a whole day and that's amazing. So that what blew my channel up. So today, I stand at 129,000 subscribers in less than two and a half years, which is amazing too. It's hard to do that. A lot of people are still struggling on the YouTube channel. I'm just telling you that by Sagi and me, you have to post regularly. You have to uh, not do it for the money. The money's gonna come. Do it because you love it. And another thing somebody told me, you have to have interaction with your fan and you gotta have charisma. I didn't know, I just naturally, charisma is just natural for me. People say I'm funny. I just say stuff because that's just me. I like to make people enjoy life, and that's why I'm on camera. I'll just say things and just me. And people say you have natural charisma, and that's why your channel is so so popular and your social media is so popular because when I sit down, when I cook, that's why even on my job, I just walk through the kitchen saying stuff, picking at people. I have I used to have nicknames for everybody in the kitchen in my job. Everybody had a nickname, and they know it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But anyway, you got to have that close, consistent, or whatever. Let me tell you how, what I use here, and I'm going to move on to the uh, my uh, legalization of my brand, and then we're going to get over to the, uh, at the end, how, we, how I did the uh, uh, success in life and how to make it in life. Look, I started YouTube with a, with a iPhone 7. Look, iPhone 7, that's how I, all I used to use when I first started YouTube. Now, right now, I have an iPhone 12 mini. iPhone 12 mini, I use sometimes when I do quick videos and I want to do like a old school soul food deal of the week or I do a video like I'm sitting down with you for like 15 minutes. I use a little iPhone 12 because I don't have to do, I can edit through my iMovie. I do three editing programs. I use iMovie, which comes to the uh, Apple program. It's on my, uh, it comes on your phone automatically. I, I have a, I didn't bring it down here. I have a Mac computer where I do my editing on. I use iMovie, I use Filmora, I use Final Cut Pro, depending on what I'm using or what I'm doing and how many cuts I have to do. If I'm doing, like I say, old school soul food dealing with imperfect foods of the week where it's just one cut, I'm just doing one video, I'm not going off and on, I'll be back, I'll be back. I do it maybe on my iPhone 12. Now, a lot of time when I'm doing my, you see me doing little road trips and stuff like that, I use this. People wonder how I'm driving. I take my iPhone 12, I stick it in here. It's a little handheld thing. Let me open this up a little. I put the phone in here. Put this like this. I got it backwards, but you'll get the idea. I set like this. This is stable. That's why the phone is very stable like this. And I can drive like this. That's how you see me driving with the phone, and I can move the camera. And it's very stable. It doesn't move. And this is what I use when I'm uh, uh, doing my vlogs, like when I'm doing road trips and I'm driving. You see the camera. This is, what I, this is how I do it. It's very stable and stuff like that. And that's why I use. Also, um, I have... Three cameras I use. I got iPhone, uh, like I said, iPhone 12 mini. I use, uh, I got a Nikon here. This is an older phone, but it updates. It's a Nikon uh, B500. This costs me about, you can get this about 600 bucks. I use this one uh, when I do videos. Most of the time I use this one when I do pictures. I want to do close up of food and make the food really have a certain color, certain beam. I can do this. This is awesome too, because it has Bluetooth capability. Every uh, picture that I take with this, it can automatically go over to my iPad or my iPhone. It can, I can uh, just uh, 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 ship, uh, what do you call it? ship it over, Bluetooth it over. Is that I have an app on my phone and my iPad, and they just it just connects with this camera, and it moves all of it. And of course, it has a memory card too in it that I can insert into my computer. So yeah, this is the, um, this is one of my nice uh, cameras that I use for, I can do videos with this, 
And one time when my meeting greets, I'll give this to my cameraman, and you see my meeting greeting came. This is the one he was using because I can, I can all imagine he's a more user friendly. He did videos with this and cameras and pictures with this one. I let him use this on my and just throw that one with him. Now the video I'm recording on right now is my um, it's a Canon G7 Mac 3. That's what I'm recording on right now, and uh, it has a clear quality sometimes, depending on how the lighting is. And it has a memory card also, and it it costs about seven eight hundred bucks. Some of them cost a thousand, depending on what it is. And mine costs eight hundred. The one I'm watching you watching on now costs eight hundred bucks. So I have three cameras I usually shoot on. Now if I'm going to like Vegas, this one I don't use that much. This is a gimbal. I know y'all seen gimbals before. I use this one like if I go to Vegas, I'm going little walking uh, videos. I use a gimbal here. Uh, you know, you can go to Vegas and see people uh, doing the uh, videos and you have them nice, wave, clear shots. I'll use my gimbal, which I very seldom use. I might use this six, seven times a year. Also, the good thing about the gimbal, if I'm like, you saw me in Vegas last year when I was sitting at the restaurant outside, uh, across from Bellagio at the Paris restaurant, while I was sitting there talking with y'all, I can take the gimbal and I'm talking to you, then I can flip this. It can set it down on the table and just still just talk and resonate with you. It has that capability that you just use a stand like that. And then I can just flip it like that and just go on. And one thing I like about this, this one here costs me about 80 bucks. And uh, they have some costs more expensive, but to what I'm doing with it, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, this does what I need to do. Then I have my iPad that I take with me that I use a lot. I have actually two iPads, one personal and one in my business because sometimes I can have my uh minute uh uh my uh publishers she can do stuff work on the impact depending on when you're what you're doing or whatever and uh yeah that's pretty much all the uh cameras that i use also i got this thing here like if i'm out fishing somewhere and um uh, like y'all see me doing lives at the lake and stuff like this i have a i have a two uh tripod i have one i'm talking on now i have another one I didn't bring over here. I have two long iPads because I have uh, um, tripods. I have one I'm using now. Then I have one because when I do videos, I'm doing videos on two cameras. I usually have the one on the Mac 3, Canon Mac 3 I'm talking on now. And I'll have this one or I'll have my iPhone mini. I don't know. Depending on what I'm cooking. If I'm doing a long cooking video, I know it's going to be like extensively I'll do the sometimes I use one camera it all depends on what I'm doing every video is not the same but I usually have two cameras going one for backup one run out and something goes wrong I have two cameras now if I get my kitchen configured in the in the summer well I'm gonna have an island and it's gonna make a lot better now cameras I have this light here I have two sets of these I have one in front of me right now that's so bright that's why I'm kind of shielding and I have this lighting here I proved my light in the last three months and it's really, really bright. The one thing I'm going to do a behind the scenes of how I deal with cooking. I have lights and tripods and stuff like that. And I'm moving around and trying not to stumble over things and stuff like that. I got cards. It's not easy. People don't know. It's not easy behind the scenes to put a video out. But these get very, very bright. A thousand watts right here of lights. And I have a thousand in front of me. I have another set depending on where I am and, and what I'm doing. Back to this tripod. If I'm out doing a... a Say if I'm doing a, a at the lake, I'll take this one with me and I'll set this thing out in front of me like this. At the, it'll go up further than that. And uh, I'll set this in front of me, put the a camera here and just talk with y'all right there while I'm fishing at the lake. I know y'all see me do lives at the lake. And this is what I use. I, this is called my mini tripod. And I'll take this one too to Vegas or somewhere with me. It goes in my, uh, it fits real well in the luggage, in my luggage uh, compartment. And uh, see, it goes down and really, really small. And I'll take this one with me, like when I go on trips and road trips. And it, it, it says, and I have another little tripod too, I don't have right here. But that's pretty much it on the uh, things I use. If you got any comments, I, I'm gonna do more exclusive video on YouTube, but that's the little things I use. And the wireless mic, I have one here, I have another one here. Now, I don't know why wireless mics are the fancy one. You can buy the Rode ROD. A lot of people use this. I have this one. I have the one I have on now. Uh, now, they have stronger quality wireless mic. I don't need those because I'm inside 70, 80% of the time I'm in my kitchen. Now, if you're a YouTuber where you do a lot of blogs where the wind is blowing you outside, there are different types of mics for different situations. 
mind I have on now does just what I need to do. There's not a lot of noise in this kitchen, not a lot of background stuff like that, so I don't need a lot of wind uh, 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 blockage uh, uh, mics and stuff like that. These do the thing. When I'm doing my road trips and in the truck and vehicle, I do, uh, I wear the mics and it helps a lot. So yeah, that's a little synopsis on that. Now the old school soul food brand, let me get moving here. I'm gonna try to cut this down. I got about 15 more minutes here. I got this old school brand design. I already told you about this. About It's been almost two years. I got this, it's a, it's a gentleman here in Katy. Do an awesome job. I worked on about two weeks of this and got this done. But once you get bigger like me, I have an Instagram, which Instagram I have like 8,000 subscribers. Let me tell you about Instagram right quick. Instagram, I started after, you, after Facebook and a little bit by YouTube. I had like three or 400 people on there, came up about 1,000 people, whatever. So two years ago, I had about 2,500 people on my Instagram, Old School Soul Food Instagram. And like I say, you need that one break, you need that one person or one somebody to see it to make it go viral you ever heard of Devon Franklin look up Devon Franklin he's a minister an inspirational speaker author whatever and you know my blackberry uh cobbler that I cook in the blackened skillet I call my uh a cast iron blackened cobbler I do in the skillet he saw that one time on I don't know how he saw it on my Instagram and he did a video on he did it and he shouted me out on that I didn't know what happened. It was a Saturday night, Sunday morning. It's like God done gave God, you God, your grace and mercy done, done brought me through here. Look what's going on here. He did a video, say, Thank you, old school soul food. He said, This I never forget. He said, Forgive me, Lord, I have sinned. Meaning he's sitting there eating that black bread cobbler with ice cream. He said, Old school soul food, you are the you are the, he gave me a nice people saw that. You know he got a million subscribers. It blew up. Everybody started coming to my channel because of that. So he was my breakthrough on Instagram. So on social media, you need that one little breakthrough, the one little shout out, one little video that's just gonna go viral. And uh, my most viral video on uh, uh, on uh, uh, on YouTube is uh, I think it's my cornbread dressing. I think he's got 985,000 subscribers, almost a million views on my cornbread dressing. Uh, yeah, so yeah, cornbread dressing and, and my sweet potato pie and sweet potatoes. That's my top three videos right there. But yeah, you need that one break on your social media uh, account. Okay, back to the brand. This is the legalities of it. You have to have all your ducks in a row and stuff like this. Don't make this clean and sweat. And then I'm going to get the financial part of this, how to be success. I have a LLC, limited liability company. Look it up. I don't have a DBA. I'm not going to go into exclusive with this. You can look it up and all this being limited liability company. If something go wrong, they can't come at me personally. Go after my company. You must have that. I'm registered in the state of Texas. I went through LegalZoom. I got that brand. My brand is uh, is, cop is, is copyrighted, uh, uh, protected. Anybody use this, they can be taken to court. If you see this anywhere else, they can be legally taken to court. It's copyrighted. It's legally the name, everything. Nobody can use old school soul food. It's all registered in the state of Texas. I got that. You must have attorney. I have attorney. I have two attorneys. Anytime I sign anything, anything sent to me, any kind of paperwork, people say, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you sign it? People want me to do, you know, those old school social deals of the week. I have many companies send me, oh, I need you to, I'm not signing nothing. I send it to my attorney, let him look over it. Legalities of uh, anything dealing with old school soul food. I have let them look at it before I sign. You must have that. CPA, I have a certified public accountant. I must have that. I have, I get, I'm gonna tell y'all straight up, of course y'all know that I get revenue from Facebook and YouTube. And that revenue goes in a special account. You must have a business account. That money does not go in your personal account. All, everything that y'all send me, everything that comes from my PayPal, cash out, it says old school soul food on it. It goes into a special account. You must do that. The government do not play. IRS do not play. Do not play with the IRS. Do not play with US government. They will kick your butt. I'm going to be, be just straight up close with you. You need to have all your ducks in a row. Do not play around with your money. Make sure I keep every receipt. When I, uh, when I charge something, I have a credit card that say old school soul food. All it's exclusively for them. I keep the receipts. When I do my taxes, you must have that. You must be. When you get to a certain level of, of uh, status, of social, where you're getting all this revenue and stuff coming from different places, companies, you must make it in writing this, this, and this. Cause not the government gonna come back and they gonna and you gonna lose everything you have. I do not play. 
So I have an EIN, a tax ID number, all that. I have a, a, a my a, a legal Zoom and all that. They set that all up for me. And I have, I should have brought it down here. To, I have a, a whole a file of old school soap with all come in a big box. All my EIN numbers, all my uh, registration, my seal. I have a seal that say old school soap food on everything. It's all legal. It's all, it's a legitimate, like I said, it's a ministry, but it's in Texas, a legitimate business. I am considered the president and the CEO. That's my title, Old School Soul Food. That is my title. I had to get my title. I'm the owner, president, and the CEO of Old School Soul Food. I have a vice president. I have a secretary. I have a publisher. Their name's on it, too. It's a legitimate company. Yes. And all this stuff, when I help, when I send money out to help people, when I, I have all that document, I you, all, you don't even know. And why I say I don't publicize a lot of it. I give a lot. I donate a lot of money to organizations, to people, to places. And I every time I go to the supermarket, and I might see people. I, I look. I do this. I see people with, especially women, ladies with kids and and elderly people. I'm very. I will walk up to them, I'll sit back, stand back, and right before they put, pull out their money, put the credit card or whatever, I'll step up and I'll pay for it. I'll make a document of that. That's all, just, you have to document all that. And I do that, a good it comes out of old school soul food. I have the ability where I can do that. Everything you send me, it goes back out. It's all documented, it's all, I don't spend money, I have my own personal thing, I'm gonna tell you how I do that. I have my own personal account, my money, I don't need to use, my, I use everything y'all send me, every donation, everything I get from YouTube, Facebook, it all goes in the old school soul food account. So yeah, I'm gonna let y'all know that. You must have an attorney, you must have a CPA, you must you get that. And I pay them on a monthly basis. I pay them way off for that, and they very good at what they do. I can pick up the phone 24 hours and call my attorney. I have two attorneys that goes through uh, LegalZoom that I can call anytime I need some advice. So letting y'all know that. Okay, savings and growth. I started young age. Young age here, my parents still in us, all our kids are young age. I started working at 16 years old. My daddy made me every check that I got from my job. I used to work in the summertime every day. During the school days, he won't let us work Friday and Saturday night. We did not work on school nights. My daddy was very adamant about that. But all of us started working at 16 years old. He taught us how to get a job, how to save money at 16 years old. So that's another thing why I am now. I am very adamant this. He would make us put, he would keep, we would keep $50 or sometimes, depending on how much we need, $25 out of our check. The others when he made us set up a, a savings account at our bank in our town. The rest of the money went in a savings account. We couldn't touch it. We used that money to buy Sulu codes and Christmas gifts. We had our own money. He, he taught us this. We know he, he could provide for us, but he taught us at an early age how to save and provide money and make and build and build quote unquote wealth at an early age. He's very adamant with that. It, I used to hate it. Like, if I make all this money, I gotta put it in the bank. No, you can only keep twenty five dollars out of your check or fifty, depending on how much you make. The rest of it he certainly put it in the bank. And we had a bank account and it, it shoot. In the summertime I make I working every day, shoot, it's time to buy school clothes in August. Shoot, I had nice clothes. I say this is pretty much work. And you see as your money was building, it was actually working. And then, of course, you're living at home, what $25? What you buying and spending $25 on? My daddy bought the food and clothes. I mean, you didn't have to pay no rent, had to buy no food. So you had no reason to $25. I put a dollar in church. I put 50 cents in church. Yeah, so that's how it started. Now, moving on. Now, as I got to working on my own, this is how you do it. Now, I want y'all to listen closely. Now, you, everyone is different. Every situation is different. But I guarantee if you do it this way, you will have minimum. If you start at 25 years old, not start earlier. If you start at 25 years old and at 50 years old, if you do it like this, I promise you. Now, I'm not going to say, uh, I'm not going to go into, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. If you do what I'm about to tell you, it's very, you got to be very disciplined. That's what I say, very disciplined and manner. If you do what I'm saying at 25 years old, for 25 years, do what I'm about to tell you, you'll have a quarter of a million dollars saved. A quarter of a million is $250,000 saved up. Take $50, 
a week. Say $50 out. If you get paid every week, take $50 out. If you get paid every two weeks, take $100 out of your check. Put in a, put in a, all right, go to a, a investment. Now, I'm not going to tell you how, what, I go with Fidelity. They got Fidelity, you got Charles Schwab, you got, uh, what's some more here? You got Vanguard is good, you got Edward Jones, but I go with Fidelity. I've been with Fidelity for years. They're my investment firm. I deal with them. Put that $100, or $200, really $200 a month. $50 a week, $200 every two weeks. Take $200 a month, put it in a Roth or a traditional IRA in some mutual funds that has a long track record and a long track, long track record means 10 years or more, a 10 years or more of growth. Put it in, go to your, go to, they don't know what you're talking about. Go to your, uh, go, like I said, I deal with Fidelity. You can go to Charles Schwab, you can go to Edward Jones, go to investors, sit down and tell them this. Put in a hundred, you can donate up to, that's $2,400 a year, y'all. $2,400 a year. You can contribute up to $6,000 in an IRA or Roth IRA. I think it's $7,000. I know it's $6,000. You can contribute into an IRA. Put that $200 into an IRA, Roth IRA, which that one, I'm not going to tell you the details of both. They'll let you know because I don't want to prolong the video. You will have in 25 years and that 3% return, that, I'm minimizing. It could be more. It could be five. It could be 12, 3% return on your investment, 3%. You'll have a quarter of a million dollars. You have 250,000, that's minimum. You can, at 50 years old, if you start at 25 years old, meaning, okay, if you start at 35, what's 35 plus, what, 60 years old? You have a $250,000. That's not a 401k, that's not social security, nothing like that. You have that at 50 years old. Now, this is what I've done. I did that. I ain't gonna tell you how much, I'm not gonna go into legalities or how much it accumulated. I'm gonna tell you what you can do. Now, with that being said, like I say, the stock market goes like this, don't let it trip. 3% is low. Now I'm not gonna get political. I'm gonna say different presidents and stuff like that, who I support or whatever, it's not gonna say. Now when Donald Trump was in office now, he create, do, they have, you can have your ifs, ands, and buts, and goods, and bads with Donald Trump. I had the largest return of my investment in the Donald Trump era. I had one year, I had 18% return on my investment in the stock market. I had one year 10, one year 12. The lowest I had was eight. The highest I ever had was 18% return on my investment one year when Trump was in office because of the way he, I guess the business way, the, he had, a, I guess, blame for business the way the companies was going, I don't know how it worked, but yeah, that was amazing, it never happened before. And then of course COVID hit and that's when a lot of things went down, I kind of eased up on my investment, but COVID ruined a lot of stuff in the stock market, but of course everything's back to normal now after that, you just gotta let it ride, but yeah. At minimum is three percent. If you let it ride, but you got to be persistent, don't take it out. Where I say put an IRA. If you take it out, the government gonna penalize you twenty percent. Uh, uh, penalize you for taking it out. They're gonna tax you to the delivery. That gives you where you don't take it out until you get sixty-five years old. But you can start taking it out at fifty-nine and a half. Fifty-nine and a half. You can start taking it out without penalty. IRAs and and four hundred one k you can take it out at fifty nine and a half. So I can't really can't touch mine anyway. But I'm just letting you know. I'm giving you an example. Now, with that being said, houses. Now, I got lucky. And I got blessed. Like I said, I listen to a lot. I don't talk a lot. I listen to a lot. I don't watch a lot of TV. I read a lot. I read a lot of uh, 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 things of how to uh, you know grow wealth, how to be successful, and things like that. I bought my house in 2006. You know, 2006, this is cool, I'm bringing up politics again, political. Bill Clinton, you know, had the people signing all these mortgages, getting people all these homes in 2004 and 2005. Just everybody need to get home. Everybody need to get home. Everybody don't need a house because everybody can't afford it and everybody came responsible for a house, but they had to get everybody in their homes. Okay, 2006, the feds upped the interest rate. And most of these people was on adjustable rate mortgage. You got two mortgages. You got fixed rate and adjustable rate. Fixed means you're going to make the same payment no matter what. Adjustable, you go on with the interest rate. As the interest goes up, interest go, that's how your mortgage is going to go. 
In 2006, the adjustable rate markets went up 18, what, 18 percent. People started getting their houses repossessed. People paying 750 for the houses. Some of the mortgages went up to $2,100 a month. They couldn't afford it. What happened? They lose their home. Then you got a lot of repossessions. You got so much rep. You got so much houses out on the market. All this uh, 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 product. You say more product than the demand. Meaning you get houses on dollar on, on pennies on the dollar. I took advantage of that. I got a home that right now, my home right now is uh, I think it's valued at one eighty five. I got it for ninety two thousand dollars. <laughs> now, let me tell you another thing. This guy, you gotta listen, kind of get your mind off other things. When you get a mortgage, if possible, try to get a 15 year fixed rate. Some people gotta get a, six, a, a 30 year fixed rate high. I don't wanna pay for a house for 15. I was what, 30 something years old when I bought my house or whatever. I said, I don't wanna be paying for a house when I'm 65, 70 years old. So what I did, I got a 15 year fixed rate. And I got learned another little advice. When Pavis would, he say, look. I said, look, I'm gonna pay this house off before 15 years. What I done, this took a lot of discipline and sacrifice. Every time I made a payment, I made a payment and a half. Every time, payment and a half, payment and a half. It was a lot of sacrifices, a lot of sacrifices. I paid my house, I had a 15 year note, I paid my house off in nine years. You can do it, people say, oh, you can. You can do it, I'm telling you. If you sit down, I'm like putting money uh, uh, money on the paper, you can do it. You can think how much money you waste going out on eating in restaurants, going out to movies, just riding around, spending money on shoes and clothes. Then you got a closet full of clothes and stuff, getting a TV that's 80 inches and you don't need but a 30 inch TV. You need, a, you need the latest iPhone, you need the latest this and that. You know how much money, if you add that up in the end year, how much money, that money you can put that's money you can put in your, uh, you can be investing in an IRA, money you can be putting on course and toward the house. Money, people waste more money not knowing. It's a guy I used to work with. He used to spend, we did the math on that. He used to spend $6,500 a year on cigarettes. $6,500 a year on cigarettes. Yeah. I told him, look, you took that money, $6,500 a year on cigarettes and invested, you know how much money you would have? Yeah. People don't realize, you put the pen to the, the money to the paper and you really sit down and see what you're spending, I'm good at that. I write down, look, this, this, is that. How much money you can, people, oh, I can't afford it. I bet you can. People sit down and do your finances, I bet you can afford a lot of things. But that's how you do it. And that's how you can be pretty much successful in that. Now, another reason I couldn't retire at 50. I was going to retire at 50. I made a plan at 25 years old to retire at 50. The reason I didn't, I didn't have a plan. I could legal, I could figuratively retire. I had the money saved. I could figuratively pretty much retire. I got a 401k. Number one thing, let me go back. I've been blessed on my job. Contribute to IRA. I also have a 401k. I was grandfathered into a pension plan that was cut off. I took the pension plan to do the payoff. I rolled that into my IRA. I had, a, of course, a 401k also, which is totally separate from my IRA. I'm contributing to that. You plan, they will contribute to up to 10%, I think it's 8 to 10%, meaning dollar for dollar. If I put a dollar, they will put a dollar. If I put $10, they put $10. So you're getting double money. Some companies, some jobs do that. If you do, you need to take advantage of that. So I was contributing through that. I'm growing wealth like that too. So when I do get um, 59 and a half, which would be a, what, another five years or so a half, you get an IRA check. You get a 401k check and get the Social Security check. Three checks by just being disciplined. Like I say, people, you see people work all their life just, oh, I'm getting Social Security. Government don't give you enough to live on. They give you enough to die on. I'm going to tell you again, you hear? Government don't give you enough to live on. They give you enough money to die on. If you're sitting around waiting on Social Security, it's going to be there. It ain't going to go away, but it ain't going to be much. I'm telling you. Don't sit there. If you're young, listen to this. Don't sit there and say, oh, I'm going to get Social Security. When it's nothing. You got people working today because they can't afford to retire because the Social Security don't pay enough to even pay their rent. If you start at a young age, being very, it takes discipline. It's not easy. I'm not going to sit here and say it's easy. It takes a lot of discipline and a lot of hard work to make this work. It'll work. I'm a living witness. It'll work. 
like I say, 50 years old, I didn't retire because I didn't have a, a plan. That's where social media come in. With this social media and YouTube, this keeps me busy. When you retire, you got to have a schedule. That's why a lot of people retire six, eight months, a year later. They go back to some job at Walmart because they, they need a schedule. You need something to do in life. I can only fish so much. I can only travel so much. After three or four months, I'll be bored. I'm not bored. I got my social media going. I'm still doing my fishing. I'm doing my traveling. But I get up every day going to videos. I'm online. I'm editing. I'm doing, I'm doing all of this. And it keeps me busy and keeps me active. I'm going to the gym. You got to have a schedule. You just can't retire and just lay down. I said, you will die quick like that. So, yeah, I didn't have a plan at 50 years old like I do at 53. 18 months ago, I say, yeah. Once I reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I told a couple of my coworkers, that's it, I'm retiring. And that was my goal. But you got to have goals. You have to have goals from you from the time you graduate high school. Speaking of when you graduate high school, I got this old book. I go through it sometime, look at it. It's a book when I graduated in 1986. I'm going to share this with y'all now. I got a couple more things I'm going to get off. And this is my senior little, I got a senior annual, and then I got this little book here. And it writes down little movies and things like this, like the, the favorite movie. I graduated in 1986, so the favorite movie was Brewster Millions, Beverly Hills Cop. Spring Break, Pee Wee Herman's Great Adventure, stuff like that, Cosby Show, Solid Gold, Simon and Simon, Jefferson, Good Time, Dukes of Hazzard, Grey's American Hero, stuff like that was on TV. But uh, another thing, gas was 73 cents a gallon in 1986, y'all. 73 cents a gallon, which is amazing. But I had goals in here. In the back, you got goals. Four, three or four I achieved pretty much, I think. Let's see, what it got here, what I might be doing this time next year, meaning 86, 87, what will I be doing in 1977? I put going to TSTI and studying food service technology, which is Texas State Technical College, which I did that, and graduated with food service degree. Five years, working at a fancy hotel and restaurant, that came to ignition. In five years, I was still working 10 years, moving up in my chef's position, which I did. That was accomplished. Career goals on my own restaurant or hotel and being financially independent in my career goals. I achieved that. I don't own my own restaurant or hotel, but I own my own business, which is this right here. It's just as good. And I am financially independent, meaning I don't have to rely on the government. Now, I got another one here. Outlook on marriage, which is very funny. Be married in 10 years and have three boys. Close the book on that. That didn't happen. Hey. Marriage might still happen, but the three boys, no. You notice I didn't want no girls. I didn't want no headache. My brother got a girl, uh, uh, got a little daughter. He say, as you get older, you got to put more buckshot in the shotgun. That's the way it works. So, yeah, another thing here I want to let y'all know. I do a lot of reading. A couple of books I like to read. Um, this is one of my favorite ones, Dale Carnegie, Lifetime Plans for Suggest. I love this book. I've read it twice. It said how to win and influence people and how to stop worrying and start living. You need to read this book. It's very inspirational. Another one I like to read is called The Magic of Thinking. The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schultz. Read that book. The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schultz. Read those two books. You need to read inspirational books to kind of inspire you. The common denominator, a lot of people's success from billionaires to small business owners, they all failed. I told you the ways I failed and got up and, and kind of progressed. You all failed, but they all got up and whatever they did when they got up, they progressed even more. You look at the people like, uh, I even look at the story of uh, this man that wanted to tell, sell tools out of his garage. And somebody said, oh, why are you selling tools out of the garage? Ain't nobody going to buy that. He kept selling tools out of his garage. And look at him now, Arthur Blank, he got all these Home Depots around here. You know how uh, Jeff Bezos uh, selling books out of his, you know, Amazon, they used to just sell books. That's all they used to sell. Amazon was known for selling books. Look at Amazon now. The number one company in the world is Amazon. People start little. And, and I'm telling you about me, old school soul food, I have lots of goals. I ain't going to go through them. But what it's, it's going to be, uh, my goal is have a nonprofit to feed people all over the state of Texas and hopefully all over the United States free. To be able to contribute by contribution, to be able to feed people hot meals on a weekly basis, that's my goal, Old School Soul Food. And I'm going to do it. I have a goal, and I have, I'm have i putting goal actions into goals into action. It's not all talk with me. I'm, and not all talk at all. 
So I guess that pretty much sums it up, y'all. Um, I don't think I, um, let's see. I don't think I pretty much, I think I pretty much touched on everything here, y'all. Uh, that I was going to, the main thing, y'all, is number one, and one more thing here. To also to be successful and be to get things going, you have to put a lot of people out your life. I'm going to get hard and core with it. You need to quit people out your life. Everybody ain't for you. If you start to grow and start to work hard and try to achieve things, everybody's not for you. I have, and everybody not can support you. Family and relatives are two different things. I got relatives right now watching me probably on Facebook. They do not like, they will not share, they will not do anything. They my blood relatives. They do not share anything because they don't, they don't support me. Now you got family. Family is there, your ride or die people. And family don't mean your blood. Family is people gonna be there no matter what. Now my mom and brother and stuff like that, they're my ride or die no matter what. But you got some relatives, I'm talking first blood cousins, will not share, will not buy anything, will not promote old school. Hey, I don't, it don't bother me, but I see those people. Now I'm a living witness. Oh, oh, we family, oh, we blood, mm -mm, we some, no, uh -uh. Get people out of your life that not on the same core as you. Some people ain't happy for you. You got people get a brand new car, be there. Oh, what do you think he got a car? He think you got, but I get this all the time. Why you live in a house by yourself? Why you got more than three, two vehicles? Why you, because I can, because I worked hard for it. I sacrificed when you out doing what you're doing and you didn't sacrifice, you had the same opportunities that I have. You make the wrong decision, I make the right decision. That's why, because I can, because God done blessed me and I was taught and raised the proper way to do it. That's why I tell them in their face and they walk away. There's so many people out there hate because they can't do what you're doing and they want you to be. I say this all the time. People see my glory, but they don't know the story. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know what I sacrificed. Wearing shoes, I want to go buy the the hundred and twenty dollar Nikes, but I went to shoot. I went to Walmart, and got me some thirty five dollar tennis shoes to get me through. Yeah, I've done that. I want to buy the jeans. Yeah, I want this and that. Yeah, if I want to go out and buy me a Mercedes and BMW. No, I'm gonna go out and buy me a a, a Kia Sport and ride around with. It. I'm gonna buy me a, 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 a cheapest car I can get to get me through. Yeah. While you riding around trying to impress people, I said, another thing, stop trying to impress people. Try trying to spend money that you don't have on things you can't afford to impress people you don't know. If people will stop doing that, it'd be amazing how much money they will save. You got so many people just spending money on stuff, no, they can't afford, they don't have. I'm trying to impress somebody at the light in a, a $45,000, $50,000 automobile living in an apartment. Yeah, you got that. You know how much you can, I've learned this many, many years ago, I tell this people, you know how much you can achieve in life, how far you can go if you stop caring what people think about you. If you stop seeing how oh, he don't like me or he didn't like this, he didn't share this. He didn't. If you stop caring what people think about you, you see how much you can achieve in life. So many people, are, oh, he only, I don't care. If you don't like me, that's you. You losing out on something great. I'm going a, I'm to a make you laugh. I'm going to have fun, I'm gonna be there for you. But you don't like me, that's you. You don't like how I look, you don't like how I talk, that's you. Like I tell people on social media, oh, you talk to my, bye, see ya. You don't like my channel, don't watch it, go on. You don't like me saying y'all, see ya. I don't wanna be ya. I don't have time for you, you're not wanted here. Stop caring, wasting time, caring what people think about you. Get to living your life, get to living your life great. You can be successful. I don't care if you you were a mother with three kids when daddy ain't supporting you, you can do it, I'm telling you. I know people have done it. I know, like I tell you, I got a friend, she raised two daughters on her own by going to school, sacrificing. I gave her a lot of advice. How to save, how to sacrifice, she done it. The lady has a house, she has two vehicles, her kids go through college, she can do it. You just have to have discipline and want to do it. You're going to have trials and tribulations, not going to be smooth. God makes it like that. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, it's going to be great and glorious. Thanks for watching, y'all. I know it's a different video. I know it was long. I really appreciate everybody watching this. It's a different type of video. If you have any comments, you have any kind of advice, email me. I'll answer email, Chef Jeff at OldSchoolSoulFood.com. This is a different video, and I just kind of touch on different things. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. 
I'm not a, 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 a interracial speaker, no the coach or nothing like that. I'm just a person, old country boy, love to cook and love life, love to see people happy, love to see people, see people progress. I love to see people striving in life and not having drama in their life. Life is too short. You have to enjoy it. You have to live it to the fullest because you can be gone in a second. I can die right now when this video is over with. And and uh, that's how life works. You got to enjoy it to the living. Like uh, uh, what that comedian said one time, I had to convince, you got to you got to live life to the to the wheels come off. Live it hard. Live it life. Love people. Walk around around hating people. Love people, enjoy people. Quit looking at people because they're different than you, they talk different than you, they they walk different than you because they're black, they white. Get the, if we get politicians and a lot of activists and all these people out of our lives, you know how many people could come together? You got people out here make a living off separating people. They make a millions and millions of dollars off separating people. If you separate people, you have power over people. If people will get them people out of their lives, you know how much this world would be and how much we can accomplish as a whole in this world? It would be amazing. But anyway, y'all, let me close this video. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe. Please follow my social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022, helping others with a purpose, Old School Soul Food. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food Day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all.